see or what we desire with book television is to put the spotlight on writers, authors, people who are imparting knowledge into the lives of our children. How do they write? How do they do their researches? What criteria do they use uh, in conducting all of these researches? And you know, so how they also benefit from all of the knowledge that they've been given to. And we are very privileged. Uh, before that, I would want to recognize some people who have made it possible for us to bring this show to you. For example, we can talk about that publications, which is in Accra, it's Legon. We can also make mention of Ultimate Films Production, covering us and all of that. We can also talk about the DAP Fund, which is an NGO which also has the, uh, the child at heart to ensure that children or kids, you know, between the ages of two to six get quality education. So before that, I, I am very privileged this afternoon, I'll be introducing to you one very important person and when I mentioned the name, you would have heard the name in many folklores or tales or all of that, whatever way you want to call it, in oral traditions that have been passed on. So this one is Anansi we are going to talk about, but it's a different Anansi altogether, okay? I know you're excited about that. So with this person, I have encountered him, I have learned a lot. I know you are definitely going to learn from him. If you want to be a writer, you're an aspiring writer, you've been writing, you don't know, but are you writing music, you're writing a book? writing textbooks, is it prose, is it drama, any form of writing. I believe you're going to learn something on this show. That is what book te uh, television brings to your doorstep. So we are going to be introducing um, Mr. Anthony Vincent Anansi. And um, he had his uh, education, a uh, Bachelor of Education degree from the Harriet Watt University, Edinburgh, Scotland. And he has also taught in different levels, right from uh, KG1 up to JHS3. And this person has also co-authored many books, several books, which of course I have seen some of them myself. Uh, he co-authored New Gateway to English for Junior High Secondary Schools, book one to three. And then he was also part of those who wrote the Teacher's Guide to New Gateway to English. And then English for Primary Schools, Teacher's Guide for English for Primary Schools. Name them, a lot of them. If I say I should continue with some other published and unpublished works. He also does consultancy services, English language, which I'm really, really going to recommend to publishers. All the big names you can talk about. If you have a team of writers, you need them to be groomed, to be trained, to write textbooks that will be relevant to the levels of the children in the school. Definitely, you need to be in touch with this person. And of course, I'm talking about none other than our, my own uncle, our father, our teacher, everything, Mr. Anthony Vincent Anansi. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. <coughs> okay. It's very, very nice to see you this afternoon. I'm very excited because I know and I just can't wait and I believe my viewers and everybody else would also want to know exactly what you want to teach us. So, um, we'll start with, uh, is it that, I mean, we've from your, your CV, your resume and everything, we can tell that you, you're a prolific writer. So how did it all start? Is it that you, growing up, you knew that you were definitely going to be a writer? Or, you know, there was some training and all of that? We are interested to know. Well, uh, to, begin, to begin with, it was not a... So it occurred to me that I would be a writer. But when I had a chance to go to Britain in 1994 on the ODA scholarship, the course that we undertook, and when we came back, we were many, uh, we became part of the English language panel. And these exposures instilled in us this love for writing. Oh, okay. I see. So once you had that exposure, you, you, you definitely you, you decided right on that you were interested to be a writer. Okay, so I see that apart from you writing, I know that you also do other works, consultancy services. How do you blend it? How do you combine your writing with all your other work schedules? Well, um, the writing. Um, in Ghana, we have uh, four ways of doing it. One, you can write your manuscript and sell that to a publisher. Or you can print your manuscript yourself and sell. 
a third one will be that the publisher will see you, you write for him, and you are paid off. And the final one, which I recommend, or which uh, is very good, is uh, writing and being given royalties. In that case, you could be given royalties for as long as the book is published. So, um, as I said, when we came back, we became members of the panel, and we had the OD advisor, uh, Miss Sally Buchanan. Now, one of the courses that we did was called a story schema, how to write stories. Literature will tell you that you have the conflict, you have characters, you have this and that. But she will start with a, a problem, how to solve the problem and the outcomes. So it is the outcome which will end the story or the story will continue. And since I did pedagogy, that is English language teaching, my interest has always been writing um, books to be used in the classroom. Uh, I've not tried writing stories, but um, if I'm writing for children, I know um, what to write. And again, my role as a tutor in the training college and as a head of the department, we had to go around a lot to supervise students in the classroom. So we came face to face with the real problem, with the real children, not the imaginary ones. So if I see a class one child, I know them all over. It's not that I was somewhere and I imagine who a class one child is, but no, we go there, we supervise them, we supervise them practice, their lesson notes, we become panel members, we move from college to college, and so on and so forth. At one point, I was a dean officer, if you like, for the six colleges in both the central and the western region, Fusu, Komenda, Ula in the central, Seriyo, so Enche, and Holy Child in the western region. And our base was Holy Child. So, the panel met, discussed what need, needed to be done, and we had work for teachers in the colleges. So all this gave me the momentum to write. Wow. So, um, from what you've discussed, it looks like you're very passionate about writing. Yes. So what would you like to do when you're not writing? I read a lot. Mm -hmm. it's, it all boils down to the writing, but you know, the reading, the writing, and all yes, like that. Uh, and we also learned a course, adaptation. So even what has happened here, I can adapt it to write a story. You can take a book, a popular book that everybody knows, Say Things Fall Apart, and you can adapt it for children even in P1 to read at every stage because, as I've told, because of my experience, I know the level of P1 children, what to write for them, a P3, P5, P6, Jesus, uh, name them. So um, if I watch, a scene somewhere, I could adapt it, change the names of the places, of the characters, of the thing that they did, of the animals, and so on, to write a story uh, for, for the level I want to write to. So if I want, if I see a story about animals, and I want to write for class one, a good place is that if uh, we saw animals somewhere, or uh, the place was full of ice and snow and so on, do I have snow here? So I cannot talk about snow when I'm in Ghana. I talk about a place where you have got the grass or the forest, so that the child can, can relate. Yeah, so this is how I do what I do. I read a lot. Talking of relating, children relating, with the numerous textbooks in the system now, everybody's writing, you know, because people want to make money. Um, now people don't really look at the passion aspect of it or wanting to impart knowledge to the younger generation. On were the days when you read books, you can remember something like Mr. Puma has a little cat, it is a black cat, the name of the cat is black he and whatnot, you can remember them. These is the books are flooded. What is your comment? Yes, in those days, uh, um, we didn't reward mediocrity. The CRDD put a panel together mm -hmm. and they knew what they were about. Then somewhere along the line, the floodgates were open. that publishers must look for writers to write. And so anybody in everybody was writing. Mm -hmm. The saddest part of the story is that many, many of the writers have never been trained anywhere. To they've never set their eyes on the syllabuses. Mm -hmm. So they imagine, oh, what I've written will be good for class one. Now, if if the person, let me set one example, a book, I will not mention the author. A book meant for class one, and you read and you have tetanus, whooping cough, diphtheria. Class one children learning diphtheria when the writers themselves hear those words. 
It means they just sat down and, and they think that the volume is about what the page is and it will do for class one. So they write. No. The syllabus is your source document. Do they even know what is in the syllabus? They don't. And again, they have uh, uh, different ideas about the English language. English language is not factual. It's about what you are going to memorize and reproduce. So that if you compare, let's say, English to social studies, if you have a book written by maybe the chief examiner, social studies, you memorize, you are going to get A. If you have a book written by the English language chief examiner, and you memorize, you are going to get F. Because English lang language is not about memorizing, it's about application, what you learned and how you apply it. So if, let's say, you go into the syllabus and they tell you malaria for class one, and you go and talk about uh, uh, anopheles mosquitoes and uh, uh, um, those terms that they use, medical terms that they use. Class one, what has it got to do with the anopheles mosquitoes and uh, 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 those drugs? All they want to read about is maybe somebody was sick in the morning, the mother felt the temperature, took the girl or boy to the hospital, and they went to maybe lab and they were giving drugs. Maybe he was advised to sleep on a mosquito net or use spray. It has nothing to do, we are not talking about medical students. So when you have earthquake in the syllabus, it is there. We are not geodetic or geography uh, scholars. So it's about what happens uh, uh, after an earthquake. Usual buildings collapsing, uh, homelessness, uh, um, NGOs coming to help with the rice, with bows, with mountains. Oh, but what they do is that they go to the net and download everything there, hook, plan and sinker. And it is like one size fits all. Whether it is class two, class four, they the same, same, same material. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, most of the books that are, are, are in the system do not address the needs of their children. And two, they are in business, competing. In fact, it's a rat race, sort of, mm -hmm. trying to build this answer. And so most of them, in fact, 95% of them are teaching towards passing the BEC. And so children are, children are doing unimaginable things. I have a copy of, of the 2019 BEC here. If you go to the competition passage, this is all that was given them. I gave this to my, my P4 grandson, he was able to read. But I tell you, this is easier than some of the text in P4 books in Ghana now. Mm. So what are we getting towards? Ultimately, what they are going to do. But they are reading 46 lines, 52 lines, 28 lines. Meanwhile, after nine years, this is what they are going to do. What people don't know is this, that if all our education is about passing the BEC, we don't need the nine years. We did about four or five years to prepare them to go and pass. But if it is education for life, then we have to learn everything in the curriculum. Mm. The head, the heart, and the hand. As uh, if Imamu uh, said in his popular song, Trin and San, the head, the heart, and the hand. So uh, that is why children get all the grades at grade 10. They go to the same school and you see them backpedaling. So that the few who went to the so-called site and came with like 18, 19, 20, they are consistent. Mm -hmm. Those on the private school, I get uh, <clears throat> 10 ones and uh, I get 11, 12 and so on. <laughs> By February of the following year, you see the evidence all over. You can go to any school and check this information. It's because they only prepared to pass examination. So what next? Life does not end after passing BEC. Life that goes on and on and on. And so instead of preparing the student to pass the BEC, we should prepare them for life. Sometimes you, you take a, 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 a test paper of a P4 child or P5. The questions have been copied from BEC. And you wonder what the, the teachers taught them that year or that day. So if you uh, teach somebody, let's say, adverbs in uh, P4, 30, and you don't ask any question about them identifying adverbs in sentences, or aligning them, or replacing them, or putting in the adverbs, and you go and uh, ask questions from the, uh, the third one, the, the publishers too have been fooling the writers. You don't pay them. Mm -hmm. And so this time, the, the, writers are not, the writers are not committed. They just write it in the because uh, after all, uh, his life is he's no way uh, connected. So I write for you, I take my money. But if we put in place royalties, that maybe, if you have heard this book, my first copy book, 
It was written in 1958. Wow. And, uh, and, and the writer, Mr. F. Jampo, still is still paid royalty. 58. How many years now? So every quarter or, uh, or every six months, you get something. If he's dead, the next of him will be getting something now as you speak. Mm. But uh, when you write and all you get is uh, peanuts, mm. how committed are you to write? So uh, uh, it is a two-way track. The, 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 the publishers must be prepared to pay royalties because it's not easy writing for their children. For example, I was writing for P2 about bushfires, and I came to a point that they came to put off the uh, fire. Put off. It's a freezer verb. So I go to the slab, but when do we teach freezer verbs? Do we do it in uh, P2? I said no. So I must use a word that they are going to understand. And I say, stop the fire. And our, our lecturer said, why purchase if you can buy? If the children will understand buy, why do you use the word purchase? So we should use the appropriate words for the children to relate so that they can know what they are writing. If you write a book and all the names are American names, Japanese names, mm -hmm. Korean names, and so on. For Ghanaians, if all the food items, the, 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 the fruits, the apricot, the speeches, and so on. How can the Ghanaian child relate? What about our papaw, our pineapple, our mango? So, um, because there is no commitment, we just go to the net and then download. I once had a text for P6, and one sentence had 58 words. One sentence. So, uh, uh, so where's the main verb in this, in this sentence? So we have to do a lot. And uh, what did most of the business system have not been written for the people. No, most of them, many, many of them. Because it's like you, you, you can't go beyond a fault without coming into contact with a very big way. Yeah. And the question is, even adults, how often do you use your Bible when you're reading, uh, this time when you're reading your Bible? How often? Do you, do you have a dictionary Bible when you're reading uh, the Bible? You don't, you understand. So why should a child be all one, having dictionary or every other word, go and find the meaning? If you get the book that we, we, we had, written by experts, we just mentioned uh, Mr. Akuma has uh, our two children. Those were written by CRDD, and people still remember 30 years ago, 40 years ago, because it was on their level. Today, nobody remembers the first paragraph of the P3 book. Why? Because the books are not been written for them. We have to go back to basics and help our children to learn for life. That is why this is everybody is looking to pass for is, uh, uh, look, looking to pass. Whatever it takes to pass, they are going to do it. Leakages upon leakages upon because it, all we think of is passing exam, passing exam, passing exam. Mm -hmm. And if that is our 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 our, our, our main idea of going to school, then we shall still to pass. There will be more leakages. All of these textbooks in the system because people are not being given the necessary royalties at BGC. The money may be too small, so they also don't care. They have to write any book at all. And people are also desperate. They just want to pass the exam. After all, what is the point if I fail my exam? You know. And even some parents even think that when the exercises or the textbooks are too simple to be read, it means that the person who wrote the book is not knowledgeable. You know. So um, I just want to know, is it that, well, I think it still answers the question because I wanted to know if it is because most of these writers are a bit egoistic. Does it hurt, you know, to be egoistic in terms of, you know, writing the right materials and even when you also write and it's too simple and you talk about them. Because I know that we have a, a system. When you, these days you write the book, you take it to the CRGD. There's an assessment, you know, they assess the book. If it, is, it passes through the test, I think you can even tell us more about that assessment. Yeah, um, the, the good thing is that sometimes uh, the, the, it is uh, this old uh, proverb, he who calls uh, the tune pays the papa, the other way around, the papa and the tune, so and so forth. The, some of these uh, uh, papers, they say that they, they want tough, tough in Christian marks, books to be used. It's like going to the hospital and you tell the doctor I have headache, but I don't like the drug you are prescribing, I want hard ones, tough ones. So when I swallow one, my malaria will be over. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't. Publishers, and, and they don't understand the concept of pupil's book. 
when we say a pupil's book, what is the meaning? A test for the pupil. So I'm writing a P1 pupil's book. The book is going to be used by P1 children, not their uncles, not their father, not, not the city teacher. So uh, when we were trained, we were told that if you are writing for 20 uh, pupils, the first five pupils should be able to read the book on their own. It is their book. Then the next ten should be with some difficulty. Then the last five who have problem, even the first I can help them. So when we were children, we were going to school. You took a book to your teacher. The teacher only had to mention the word for you. He didn't even explain to God the book was written at your level. But when you go to some of these private schools, class one children, they are reading P3 book. I don't know why, why they are doing that. The rule is if the child is good in class one, more class one work. If the child is exceptional, let the child put him somewhere and let the remainder, even the university. Don't you have first class, second class, upper, second class, lower, third class, now we even have a pass. But they are in the university. So why do you anybody think that everybody in this classroom, four of them, all of them are good. And so we are in class one, we use class two syllabus. That doesn't sit well with me. So unless we come to understand these uh, basic principles, pupils, that is why the experts wrote the syllabus. If we go through the uh, class one for class one, you lay the foundation, you build on and on and on. We don't behave as if you are going to write the, the BEC in class two or class three. So this idea that uh, as of my school, those in class were doing pieces group, I don't understand. This is not how education, education is all about weeding a farm so that uh, you can work quickly and go and take your money and go away. It is a lifelong uh, enterprise that we take our time to go through. So let us understand what is meant by a pupil's book. These days, if you take a lesson in the class four book, even the best student in the class is struggling. If the best student is struggling with the class four book for the class four, what about the others? We are about 40. And our first boy or first girl has problems reading the book. How can uh, uh, the others also read? So it is not about uh, writing a tough book or difficult book and so on. It is about writing at the level of the children. Unfortunately, if someone like me writes, they will say it is too easy. I don't understand what, uh, because I have used the syllabus. And so even this time, because we are doing missionary work, somebody says write for me, we just write on their protest. After all, uh, you will not pay me royalties, you are going to pay me off, so I also write. Or now, if, if we want the people to write, and we get the right people and we write, the children will, will relate easily, because the book has been written at their level, not somebody's level. So you don't sit down somewhere and you, you, you try to say that, well, this book I've written is for people. Without going into and then say that, oh, this is too easy for people. What is your, your people? Do you know what is happening in other places? On TV, we see schools on the trees. There are some schools that they don't even have teachers. And all of them are going to read this book. And you claim that yours is, you, you, uh, uh, it is, it is so easy that it should be so difficult that they cannot read. I don't understand. Um, Mr. Nancy, I have read here that you co-authored New Gateway to English for Junior High Schools. There's a number of them. I just want to know uh, if those authors are your friends, you know, how many of them are your friends and what or how do they help you to become a better writer yourself? Well, but uh, on a personal level, I have two, two good friends. One is J.K. Asamoah, a headmaster of... Uh, uh, this uh, our memory school. This school, this uh, popular God, God National uh, Reading. You know the place where they say well, people go there and they get cares or something. But I will tell you. And then Tebian, mm -hmm. we call out each other all the time. I've come to this. Then they will do. As I'm also going to the same college uh, with me. So uh, sometimes you get to a point, you forget something, you have to call them. And then they will fill in the man. They also call me and also in advance. So it's like a quick pro or something. Yeah, so so this are uh, on person. Otherwise, well once a team is put together, you relate, so you become friends. That one is there. Yeah, and you keep on consulting and consulting. And I'm a team player, so I have don't have a single book. I'm always a co-author. So it means I'm a team player. I want to others, learn from them and also learn from me. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
be learning a lot this afternoon, being a team player, yes. trying to go for the royalties, you know, writing for the level of, uh, to the level of the students, you know, all of these things. That is great. Um, uncle, please. Yeah, I want to call uh, 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 Antoine, 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 uh, he's Antoine Yama. headmaster of uh, Antoine Saint-Michel. Oh, okay. Yeah, Jacob Samoa, Antoine, yeah, so, that, please. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Antoine, okay. So, we just want to know, um, what was the best money you ever spent as a writer? Spending? The best money you ever had or spent as a writer? You're asking to do this question, was it there? We're now on publishing company, Longman PSC. And they paid royalties. Every person I do as was paid. Mm -hmm. And they bought all the receipt, what they sold, all the test report, and so you were in Ghana here and you had your money. Those were hard pounds account were paid pounds. Those of us who had the account were paid cities. But we didn't pay that because we are doing the government uh, award, um, foreign exchange. And we got, yeah, on the two tranches, that, that the first two, I was able to buy a car out of that. 79 million dollars in old currency and 41 million. I bought my first car with that. Mm -hmm. But others, I beg to say, is like a, a hand to mouth type of writing. That is why the commitment is not there. And in that uh, operation, I was made the gatekeeper because I was an indigenous guy. Mm -hmm. And I had to call people to order that no, this one will not make us win the bid. Rewrite. So I, people were ordered to rewrite. So what we presented, even now, Nigerians are photocopying that book, and some of them go to schools in Ashanti. They are still using new gateway. Because of what we put in there, they are still using a new gateway. But uh, unfortunately, well, uh, the government is not sponsoring that. But if you go to Kumasi or even Accra, go to private school, they are still using new gateway, but you see the, 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 that is a photocopy work, and so the pictures and the uh, print are not sharp as uh, we want them to be. Oh, I think I would like to take you back a little bit. Yes. Talking of the language for the level writing, you know, publishers getting writers who write to the level of the, the pupils or the, the children, if I should put it that way. The language policy issues, what is your take on that? Well, I have never agreed with the language policy in that. Why? Because language experts tell us that the best years for a child to learn a language easily, the term is to acquire a language, is from a three to eight years. So they are in SG2, KG1, KG2, P1, P2, P3. And these are the years that unfortunately Ghana, we still teach them what the children know already. I am a Fanti, and they still say, uh, teach me the Fanti, the Fanti, I'm instructed, such that it is very, very difficult to teach in P4. And some, uh, some students don't recover from this. So you go to some places, even JHS3, the teachers still use uh, Ghana language to teach. And whose fault? Now we are in February. I'm a gay person. Pick a child from any fancy uh, home. Take a child to Biakor on the uh, Elimina Road. The best ever, ever chairman are there. By Christmas, this boy will be speaking Arabic. Bring a girl from Duyakur and let her come to live with me here. By Christmas, this girl will speak Arabic. But we rather use that time to teach. I'm not going to ask that question. You have been asking me. Have you seen one fan to do in my country before? You are a true student. Yes. Mass written in Fanti. Why? So you don't have, have no idea. So, but that's what we are saying that. And so the best time that we should uh, you uh, this this problem happened to Lee Kuan Yew. You know that famous, famous man. Mm -hmm. When he came for opening, he insisted that right from the time the child entered the classroom, use English to teach them. And the same, same, same problem there. He said, you come back. And so when you take your child to the so-called private school, it is that they are teaching the child to speak English. The child is only, only if you like, activating his language acquisition device. That's all. Because the child will be immersed. English here, English there, English everywhere. The child will speak English. Then you, you will give the child a tool. I'm not saying a, a speaking English means you are clever. I've never said that. 
but the church is given it to, to explore. That is why you can go to some my private schools here who are doing the right thing. Some lessons, a fancy lessons are taught in fancy class one. Other lessons are taught in English in class one. And, and they are not super, super human. They are like any other children anywhere in Ghana. And this is why, and so some teachers have taken their own children from the government school to private school where they are taught by the teachers. They are even better qualified. I know somebody who is a graduate, better qualified. The, the teacher teaching their daughter is exclusive way. But she thinks that they are learning well in a private school. So it's like a medical doctor taking uh, the child to a quack doctor to, 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 to work on. It's strange. And I keep on saying this. Those who keep on saying this, they should be sincere and come to tell us where their children and their grandchildren are going to school. They should be honest. That we have been saying that the best way to teach the child is the L1. Agreed. They should come and tell because of that. Right.